How's everybody doing? My name is Mark, also known as DJNSM. Go to DJNSM.com to find out more. Today's video is super duper critical for anybody who's performing live in Ableton. I was having a problem recently where I would get audio dropouts of quarter or a half second intermittently a couple times a night where it, just no audio. Anytime I dragged new information into my already playing set, it would go silent for a second and freaked me out. So I'm going to explain to you how and why this happened as well as the fix and included in that fix is how to not lose any of your warping information. So at the root of this whole sort of hurdle that I bumped into is the fact that Ableton can only apply its warping and audio engine to WAV or AIF files. Anything other than those two formats requires Ableton to generate a WAV or AIF file on the fly. So as soon as Ableton touches that audio, it may create a temporary file. The creation of that temporary file is what stresses your audio system, thus leading to dropouts. That same temporary file that is generated is what Ableton actually puts the audio effect engine into. I can explain why, but I'm not going to. I probably already confused a few people. So let's get into the nuts and bolts of this issue. Let me show you how to do the fix and uh, let's just get this done and over with. So open up your audio preferences, go into your file folder tab, look at the decoding and web cache, and you will see the cache folder location. I happen to have that open already right here. So by sorting under date modified, we can see that there are no WAV files in the cache folder that are from today, just an IDX file, which has nothing to do with this. So anytime Ableton touches audio, in any way, and that audio is not a WAV or an AIF file, it creates this temporary file for it to apply the audio engine to. So you can touch the audio by dragging the file into Ableton and all sorts of other stuff, or just by clicking in, clicking on that file in the browser window, such as this. Here we go, and touch. And we can see that there's a little WAV file status bar that's loading down there in the bottom. And that is applying the warping markers and, and manipulating the audio and, in this case, generating a WAV file on the fly. So once that's completed, we're going to flip back over to the temporary folder. And in this folder, we can see that there is a WAV file that was created seconds ago. And it's that WAV file that we're going to start working with. So I work with a drag and drop set in an established environment. I drag ALS files into an established environment and play my live set from there. It's the way to go. It's high performance. It's the end game method and I love it and you can learn about it somewhere else. The way to swap out your non-wave AIFF is going to be this method here. Open up your set and you can see that I have a number of cells in front of me here for that particular set. They are all cells linked to the same audio. And if we click on any of the cells and click this link right here, it says, I am linked to an MP3. And we click on another cell and it is linked to the same MP3. We want to get rid of that MP3 and swap it for a WAV file. So the best place to find that WAV file to swap it is, surprisingly enough, in the cache folder that Ableton created. So let's grab that WAV file and drag that into the exact same folder. And Ableton is copying that over. That's a big file I have, actually. And we're going to use that to swap. Next in Ableton, what we are going to do is open up File and the Manage Files setting. In this case, we click on Manage Set then view files and this dialog shows us all of the audio that is used or linked in this set and we can see right here is an mp3 and that's bad 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 we want to use a wave because that's going to increase our performance so the way to swap that is to click on the hot swap icon right here boom you go orange we love orange orange is great stuff we're going to go over to this area here and we're going to click on that wave file and then we're going to hit the enter button and then we're going to click off of the hot swap and we can even exit that dialog box. Now if we click on any of these cells and click on the link it says I am linked to a WAV file. I'm going to click on another one here. Boom! I am linked to a WAV file. Perfect, beautiful, saving right now. Just to prove my point I'm going to open up a new blank set here 
and then I'm going to open up that same ALS file that we just worked with. There we go, and we're going to just double proof check our work. Boom, link to a wave. Boom, link to a wave. And here's the great part. All of the warp markers are still there. All of our settings have stayed stable. We are done. Rewind this video. Learn how to do this. If at all possible, work with wave files from the start because it's the way to go and it's more efficient for the Ableton engine. I know that because I am a performance freak. One final note, I don't want to get into any conversation about how I should not be using MP3s or M4As. They are part of the environment. I know very well that their sound quality is diminished compared to WAV files, but they are part of life. A lot of audio I use, I can't even find in a WAV file. And most of the sound systems I play through live, it doesn't matter anyway because the noise floor and the quality of those speaker systems is so low. The difference between an MP3 and a WAV file is in audible. And then the final reason it doesn't really matter to me in live performance is because as long as there's a good beat and some good bass and a good tune and you're not crashing, the crowd's going to be happy. So with that said, we're moving on. We're closing out. We're having fun. Remember how to do this and remember to work with wave files from the start to increase your performance and keep things more stable over the long haul. My name is Mark. I run the Colorado Ableton user group. My personal website is djnsm.com and I encourage you to kick ass. Thank you.